Welcome back, everyone. Um, it is an honor to be working with such a wonderful faculty again uh, this 2014-2015 school year. My name is Ross Martin, for those who do not know me, and this is the Hazardous Communication Training. Um, I hope you enjoy the picture, by the way. Um, I had the opportunity to either give you this PD in person or on this video, which I decided to do uh, the latter because I understand that you guys are working very hard to set up your classroom and get prepared for the next school year. So hopefully you are watching this professional development video at your convenience at some point within the first week of coming back to school. Um, if you have any questions or anything that is confusing to you, uh, throughout this video, please feel free to come up to me or email me. Uh, I'd be happy to work with you guys in, in order to make sure that this is successful. Okay, so let's look at some of the training goals from this video today. First off, we're going to go over what is hazardous communication, also known as HASCOM. We're going to learn some of the important terms and jargon used throughout the inventory process. We're going to understand the role of me as a site chemical supervisor. Uh, we're going to go over uh, an overview of hazardous materials, what they are, how you can identify them, and what we need to do with them pretty much. And then finally, we're going to understand your role in the completion of the chemical inventory spreadsheet, which is really the most important end product from this whole program that we're about to embark on. Okay, so first, some in, uh, important definitions used in HASCOM. First off, what is a ha uh, hazardous chemical? It's just about anything, and we're going to get further into that in just a little bit. Uh, SES is the acronym used for uh, my position, Site Chemical Supervisor. Uh, MSDS is yet another acronym. This is also referred to as SDS, and this basically just stands for Material Safety Data Sheet. Uh, chemical inventory, which is an Excel spreadsheet that is currently located on the share drive. You as a, a team or um, specials area will be working together uh, in order to help complete the chemical inventory. So this is going to be, like I said, uh, the end product uh, from this whole program. And why are we all doing this? Well, it's so that we can achieve a globally harmonized system. Uh, and basically, a globally harmonized system describes a work environment that standardizes uh, the classification and distribution of information regarding hazardous chemicals to its employees. Okay, so has come more in detail. Like I said, it is BCPS's standard, uh, our standardized approach to reaching a globally harmonized system within all of the public schools. This system entails a hazard communication liaison, which is me, uh, a chemical inventory spreadsheet within every school. Uh, like I said, that Excel spreadsheet is going to be in every school, and we're documenting every potentially hazardous uh, chemical or substance on the spreadsheet. And then finally, um, through this program, you will receive um, has come uh, professional development, which actually you've already received. Uh, I hope you guys remember last year you were required to watch a hazard communication video uh, that had a brief test at the end of it. Uh, it was like a 20 minute tutorial or something and you guys had to print off a certification and hand it to Donna. A lot of the terms and, and things that I'm going to be connecting today will often refer to that video and I hope I do a good job at clarifying and, and going back to some of those things in uh, further detail just in case if you may have forgotten any of those uh, important key points. My role as SES, um, first off I oversee the collection of the chemical inventory and the MSDSs um, so that Excel spreadsheet I pretty much manage it. Um, I understand and review the use of labeling, uh, especially secondary containers, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, I forward the completed chemical inventory spreadsheet to the ground central office. Um, I monitor 
for new uh, new chemical use within the building and update uh, the chemical inventory. So my job is ongoing from this point forward uh, and will constantly require communication between myself and you guys if you happen to introduce any new materials that are potentially hazardous to children and or adults. Um, and the reason why we're all doing this is because this program is BCPS's response to a federal requirement monitored by the U.S. Department of Labor. Essentially, every school district and every school has to do this now. We have to understand and be educated about the hazardous materials at our school, uh, know what to do in case somebody comes in contact with these uh, hazardous materials, and basically know what should stay at the school and what we need to get rid of. Uh, and we need to come up with a standardized approach to do so. So let's get into some of the common hazardous chemicals in school that we see. Um, you would be surprised uh, what falls onto it, uh, starting with glues and paste. And this even includes uh, non-toxic glues. Uh, hand sanitizer is a uh, hazardous chemical, or excuse me, a substance. Clorox wipes, paints, medications, even including cough drops, uh, batteries, spare light bulbs, and virtually any product that contains the words caution, warning, danger, or even keep out of reach of children, those words are pretty much a red flag. If you happen to see those words on a label, we know that we're dealing with a, uh, a hazardous substance or chemical. Um, also, if we're looking at the back of labels, we might come up with some pictographs. We might encounter, uh, for example, on the left, uh, in the top left corner of my graphic, we have a flammable pictograph, uh, a picture of a flame. That means that that substance has a potential to catch fire, obviously. Well, all of these can indicate a potential hazard to a person if not used appropriately. So when we are trying to identify uh, potentially hazardous materials in our school for our inventory spreadsheet, we're going to be looking for, like I said, the keywords such as caution, danger, and also we're going to be looking for these pictures because any of these are going to help us identify and, and do our job to make sure that we're managing these substances. Um, and some substances might have several, um, I guess, attributes that could be potentially hazardous. So on the right side, our graphic shows four different sections, flammability, health, protective equipment, and reactivity. Um, these uh, sectors could be numbered on a scale of 1 to 10, obviously 1 being the least uh, toxic or hazardous and 10 being the most. And... Some products will go into great detail about the different areas in which a product can be hazardous. We're going to use all of these to help us identify what is potentially hazardous uh, in our school. Now, just because it's hazardous doesn't mean you can't use it. And I'm sure that that's probably relieving to many of you. Of course, you can use glue. Um, but really, the most important question is, when is it all right to use hazardous products within the school or what is okay. Um, I think that we all need to pay close attention to this slide in particular. Um, so basically products that are approved by the county are good products to, to use in the school. So for example, all products supplied by the county for the nurse, art department, um, all the um, products found in science kits, science kits and all the um, products provided for the grounds crew to use. So you don't need to worry about that vinegar that is in your science unit kit. Um, even though it might have a hazardous uh, component to it, if it was provided in your science kit, you're fine. Also, medicines are okay to be used within school when they are stored and administered by the nurse. Um, and even talking more about cough drops, Cough drops are okay to have if the nurse knows about it and it's held uh, by the teacher for the student to ask for permission when he or she needs to access uh, you know, some cough drops at any time. Clorox wipes, believe it or not, are also okay. I know we keep on going back and forth with this. 
I'm telling you right now, Clorox wipes are okay to use. Uh, they must be locked away, however, when they're stored. They can't be out for, you know, children's reach. And that's pretty much just common sense. Uh, disinfectants, hand sanitizers, uh, mild soaps are good. Dishwashing liquid for those who washes, uh, wash their own liquids are also okay. However, they also must be locked away when stored. Um, Non-toxic glues, pa uh, paste, paint, markers, or any type of school supply that is deemed to be non-toxic is okay. However, we do have to inventory some of these uh, glue and adhesives are one thing that we do have to inventory, even though they might say still that they're non-toxic. Uh, and then finally, batteries that are properly stored and also, of course, disposed of after use. You can't throw them in the garbage can. What is it? What is not right? Uh, all right to use uh, in the school, or when is it not all right for hazardous products to be used? Whenever you see a product that states "keep out of reach of children," children should not be using it. Um, that's pretty plain and simple and clear there. So look on your products that you have in your classroom. If you have your kids working with anything that has that warning on it, uh, it needs to be out of their hands and it can't be in the school. Uh, this includes super glue. I know that some people are going to be upset about that. I'm sorry, we can't use it. It's just too intense of a, of a substance to be working with. It also includes Drano, Windex, and basically any type of strong substance that's used by the grounds people for maintenance purposes. Um, these products should be only be used by the grounds crew, and you should not yourself have Windex or Drano or you know anything of that sort. Um, also, you should not have any hazardous chemicals that are placed into a secondary container. For example, glue, for whatever reason, placed into a Coke bottle. That's not okay. It needs to be in the bottle that it came in so that the, the appropriate labeling on it is intact uh, so that we know clearly what it is. Even though it might look like it's glue, we need to see the label on there and on the original label. So no switching of substances into secondary containers. Um, and then more importantly, any hazardous product that is used in a way that it was not intended to be used. And once again, I, I feel like I'm gonna make some people upset. I'm sorry, shaving cream. Putting that on desks for vocab lessons uh, is no longer uh, acceptable. Simply because, obviously, shaving cream is meant to shave hair. It's, it's supposed to help with that process. It's not, it's not designed to, uh, you know, draw letters and wonderful shapes and pretty pictures on, on a desk. Uh, and the same thing with uh, hairspray. Some people use hairspray to preserve paintings. We can't do that because that's not the intention and the purpose in which hairspray was designed for. Um, by the way, I hope you love that picture that I took. Um, and Nina, if this is your first time watching this video, I apologize, but I had a lot of fun uh, smearing shaving cream all over your furniture without you knowing. Uh, and of course I cleaned it up because you didn't find it out until now. Okay, so the chemical inventory process, which we need to know. if you fall into one of these departments um, that are noted below, the office, the centralized office is already going to supply you guys with your inventory. So there's nothing that you need to do additional. That includes the art teachers. Um, all the supplies that you get as an art teacher, Ms. Batista, um, from the county um, is okay. There's already a list provided by the office that they made for you so that you don't have to do anything in addition. Now, that does not include anything that you purchase on your own. Uh, so if you decide to get a new set of paints that wasn't supplied by the office, we are going to have to inventory that on the spreadsheet. Uh, CTE is another office that might have something um, that is potentially hazardous that might already be on the inventory spreadsheet. Operations food services, and health services, including the nurse, are okay. There was already something sent from these offices. And then, like I said earlier, science and grounds also have their own inventory taken. Um, as for every, anybody else, if you have uh, a kid that brings in glue, um, 
you know, let's say it's Ross glue stick, the best glue stick, of course, uh, or Elmer's glue. We have to inventory each of those because they're both made by different manufacturers. So even though there might already be a Ross glue stick in the inventory, if you happen to get uh, an Elmer's glue stick or any other type of glue stick that's made by another manufacturer, those have to be inventoried as well. And we're going to be talking a little bit more about that. Um, so anyways, going back to the chemical inventory process, we're also going to review in school use and transfer to the school list and add the chemicals found but not listed uh, to the school list. So your role in all of this, what are you supposed to do in order to make sure that this program is successful? First off, you need to meet with your team sometime between now and end of October. And what you guys are going to be doing is making an inventory of all the hazardous materials uh, located in your classroom. Don't worry about the materials, like I said, in the science kits. Uh, and don't worry if you're the nurse, art teacher, or uh, building service worker. These are already taken care for you. Um, you're going to fill out the required information about every hazardous material found in your classroom on the hazardous chemical list. Um, and this is found on the share drive, like I said. Um, and then finally, you're going to remove any hazardous materials that state keep out of reach of children. These um, products that uh, include this warning on the label must not be present in your classroom. So whenever you find this label, keep out of reach of children, you need to take it home. I'm sorry if you already spent money on it. This is something that we just have to adhere to according to policy. Um, anything that's placed in a secondary bottle needs to be taken home as well. Um, and anything that is not used for its intended purpose like shaving cream or hairspray needs to be taken home as well. The hazardous chemical list is due by October 31st, 2014. Okay, so let's complete a brief demonstration in order to go through how um, we are going to complete our chemical inventory one product at a time. Let's take a look at this Clorox wipes container. We notice that the word caution is on there. Therefore, we need to identify this as a hazardous chemical. It needs to be placed on our inventory. So after identifying that our Clorox wipes was a hazardous substance, we need to look up more information online about it and in particular we need to find the material safety data sheet uh, about that product and the material safety data sheet or msds as we call it is basically just a form uh, that every manufacturer provides about their products that lists all the hazardous chemicals on it and what you need to do if something uh, of an emergency comes about while using this product so the first thing i'm going to do is access my browser. Now I'm looking for the MSDS sheet for Clorox wipes, so I'm going to write MSDS and then I'm going to type the name as specific as possible. Clorox wipes and this was Lemon Fresh. That was the specific name of the product. And right here we have Lemon Fresh the Clorox company, this is the MSDS uh, safe, material safety data sheet that we need that has all the information about this uh, that we need to put on our inventory. So I'm going to click on this link uh, and basically what comes up is a very typical uh, material safety data sheet that you may encounter when uh, doing your own inventory. Please keep in mind that some of these vary a little bit from product to product. Uh, don't be overwhelmed by all the things that we see on here. There's only a few things that we need to find. One being the actual product itself. One being the distributor or it's sometimes uh, referenced or referred to as a manufactured. All the hazardous ingredients uh, as well need to be put on there. Um, I don't need to know the concentration or the worker exposure, just the names of the ingredients themselves. So once we find all this information, you are going to go onto the share drive, access the hazard communication folder, 
and click on the Excel spreadsheet titled Hazardous uh, Chemical List. And what you'll find is a spreadsheet looking much like what I have here in front of us right now. Um, I've already taken the initiative to detail everything about the Clorox disinfectant wipe. So it's already on the spreadsheet uh, to show you what we would take from that MSDS sheet and put on here. The first thing that we're going to put on is the common name. So the common name of our Clorox disinfectant wipes is Lemon Fresh. The chemical name, we need to list every hazardous chemical that's found in that product. So everything that's on that list needs to be on there. The manufacturer, which is also sometimes uh, referred to as the distributor, needs to be on there. In this case, it's the Clorox Sales Company Incorporated. Um, and then we also need to indicate the areas in which this product is stored or used. I don't want you to worry too much about this particular um, area that we need to enter in here. If you feel like the product that you're trying to inventory is found all over the school, just use the code general classroom and school use. If you're entering a chemical that you know for a fact that only you have, then you can enter in the school, school name. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to ask me. You also need to indicate the date in which the product was added in the inventory and the location of the SDS sheet. Um, we're just going to put, in this case, PHES, main office, for all of these. Now, the wonderful thing about this inventory is that if you notice that anything is already entered on there that you may have, you don't need to enter it again. So if there is Ross glue stick on here, which might I add is the coolest glue stick there is, um, and you happen to have some of that in your classroom, you don't need to enter this onto the inventory because it's already been done. However, if there are other byproducts of glue sticks, such as Elmer's glue or you know Staples glue, because those are made by a different manufacturer, we do need to enter those. Um, any product that is an adhesive uh, or has a label on there that is a hazardous chemical needs to be put into the inventory. And yes, I know that uh, glue is labeled as non-toxic, but because it is uh, an adhesive, we need to put in all adhesive adhesives as well. I think it's important for all of you to know that it is my, not my job as chemical site supervisor to hunt all of you down and make sure that we're all making, uh, you know, all the adequate measures to ensure that our inventory is done so properly. Um, however, I do want to encourage you to do this as, as much as you can. Uh, of course, I don't expect us to be 100% accurate and have 100% of all the hazardous materials entered into the database, nor do I expect us to uh, have everything that is a uh, uh, hazardous chemical that should not be there removed from the classroom. There's a lot of stuff in our classes and some more than others. And it's very easy for us to forget something or leave something out. However, I do want you to know that if you have any questions or uh, concerns or if you're confused after watching this presentation, to feel free to, to get in contact with me. And I'm here to work through uh, this process with you and your team to make sure that we're doing our job the best uh, of our ability.